Income Tax 2020, Practice Problem 1, Presentation 40, Education Credit. Come in, relax with Income Tax 2020. Here we are in our Lacert Tax software. You don't need the Lacert Tax software to follow along. However, I do think they have a 30-day free trial, so if you can get access to a promo or demo version of it or any other tax software, it could be a good tool to practice with. We're going to be continuing on with our comprehensive practice problem one. In the first section, we enter the information related to our income. In the second section, we looked at the above the line deductions. Then we looked at the itemized deductions. And then we added a Schedule C business. And now we're focusing in on page two, where we're focusing in on the credits. So we now have added our dependents, where we have the two credits for the uh, child, the child tax credits and the other dependents credits at the 2,500. And now we have one of those dependents. We're going to go back to page one. One of these dependents, that being Amanda, is a student. So she's a full-time student, and therefore she has tuition. So we're looking for education credits at this point in time. So if you have someone who is a student, a child who is over 17, they're not going to be qualified for the child tax credit. If they're over 19, they may not qualify as a dependent at all, unless possibly if they are a full-time student, which Amanda is, so therefore she can still be a, a, a dependent possibly. And the then the question, of course, is, well, if she's going to school, what are they going to be the tuitions? Can we get any tax advantage from paying those uh, tuitions? And we're going to say, yeah, we're going to get a form for that. The typical form is going to be a uh, 1098T generally. And so we got our 1098T from um, the University of California here, we're going to say. This, we're just making this up, obviously, for Amanda. And then we got the tuition payments of the 12000 So we're going to be adding that then. So we got our credit that we're going to be adding in. So we're looking at our education credits. It's not for the taxpayer of, or the spouse. We're looking for a dependent, and that dependent's going to be Amanda. So we're pulling over Amanda here. Uh, so then it says number of years the HOPE credit was claimed. We're just going to say none at this point in time. Remember, there's going to be limitations on there's two credits that you're kind of going for. You got the HOPE credit and the lifetime learning credit. So we're going to go ahead and say they qualify for the HOPE credit here, but you can go back to the prior presentations to make sure to, to look at those, those qualifications for the HOPE credit and the lifetime learning. The general rule is that you go for first, you know, the HOPE credit. And then after, if you don't qualify for the HOPE credit, because that's usually the one that would have the most benefit, then you would go for the lifetime learning credit. So then we have our educational institution, and we would have typically a 1098T for that. Now, you can't depend completely sometimes on, on the 1098T for the amount, but that should at least give you an indication that you have then this education credits that you need to look into. We're going to take this information just directly from the 10. Uh, 98T. So we'll pick this up. We're going to say this is going to be here and the street address I guess is uh, here and so I'll pick that up and so we have that and then the city is going to be Los Angeles Los Angeles California and the zip is going to be then the 90095, 90095. So the federal ID number then, federal ID is going to be this one. So we need that. So they want the information from the institution here. And then the 2020 form 1098T was not received. It was received. We got one. So we're going to go on down to the qualified tuition. And that's going to be then for the 12,000 we have. So I'm going to say 12. Thousand. Now, if any other kind of expenses would qualify, you can you can go over those. But I'm going to put the twelve thousand and keep it at that. So we're going to put on over to our forms then, and we shouldn't have any change to the first page. So we have the taxable income still at the eighty six two twenty one. We're looking second page to get our benefit from the education payments that were paid on the credit side of things. So here we have, our, now we have the, the child and dependent credits, the 2005, we're focusing here now on the 1,500 up top, and then we have the other 1,000 down here. So it breaks out between the amount that's gonna be refundable and the amount that would not be refundable portions, even though we don't, we're not really needing it to be refundable because our, we still owe tax, meaning our tax debt is not below zero, but the way they calculate this credit is they, they calculate the refundable portion and the non-refundable portion. So the, the uh, non-refundable portion up top here, the 1,500, is coming then from Schedule 3, Line 7. 
So schedule three, line seven. If I go back on up top, I'm going to get rid of this check mark. It's right here. So we then have the education credits from form 8863. So now we're going to go to form 8863 to see the calculation for the education credit. And then we have up top the after completing part three. So part three actually completed first here. If we go through that, the little questionnaire that we had, we had then we're qualifying for in the American Opportunity Credit. So we have the 4,000 is kind of like what our cap is. So we had over that, obviously. So we've got the 4,000 here. And then it says subtract 2,000 from line 27. Multiply line 28 by 0.25. And there's going to be then our 5,000. So then it says if line 28 is zero, enter the amount from line 27. Otherwise, add 2,000 to the amount on line 29 and enter the results. So there's going to be our 2,500. Then if we go back then to page one of our form, we've got the 2,500 here. Now they're kind of calculating the income like phase out limitation cap, which we're not hitting right now. So we should be good on it. And so then we have that 2,500 amount. We have the refundable uh, American Opportunity Credit at the 1,000 then. That's the refundable portion. And then we have the, the uh, non-refundable credits is going to be the rest, which would be that 1,500. So total benefit, 2,500 broken out, as you can see, between refundable and non-refundable. Then showing in, ultimately on, the 1040 page 2 in these kind of two locations, which is a little confusing, but it is what it is. The, the, the uh, non-refundable portion up top, line 20, that's pulling in from the Schedule 3, line 7. And then we have the uh, refundable portion, even though we don't need it to be refundable on this particular return, but they still kind of break it out down here on uh, line 29. And that's going to pull, pull on over so that our, our uh, tax at this point is 4,813. That's not our tax. That's our overpayment at this point is now 4,813.